Hey guys, I'm Practical Gaming, and welcome back to another issue of the top three indie games that I've found in the last month. We have a good mix this time. We've got a puzzle game, a Metroidvania style game, and a story heavy pixelated game about a struggling game dev that I think you'll like. As always, I'll leave all the links to the games in the description so that you guys can check them out for yourselves. So, let's get into it. First up, we have Helltaker by Vin Rapper. A rather strange and short puzzle game created in the Unity engine that puts you in the shoes of someone called the Helltaker. He wakes up one day with a dream of creating a harem full of demon girls and ventures into hell to recruit them. To get to the demon girls, you have to go through a number of obstacles in your way, which is where the core game mechanics come in. It has a straightforward get from A to B sort of dynamic. You have a set number of moves, which is the max amount of moves that you can take, to get to the demon, and there are multiple things that can cost a move. Moving from one tile to another costs a move. Attacking an enemy costs a move. Moving a boulder out the way costs a move. So you have to determine the best path while doing all the necessary actions to get to the end. Once you get to the demon, you have to convince her to join by choosing the right response. Choose the right one and she joins the harem. Choose the wrong one and she kills you and you have to start over. Though considering there's only two options, if you remember the path you took, it's not that dangerous an outcome. While the story was extremely odd and wacky and didn't seem to have much effect on the gameplay other than asking for hints, the actual puzzles involved were quite creative and actually pretty difficult to do. The levels are designed well so that it tries to lean you into the obvious path for doing it, even though the correct path is much more difficult and clever. I like the use of the music and how the characters move with the beat, it gave me a kind of Crypt of the Necro Dancer kind of feel without the actual rhythm mechanic of the game. I do wish the dialogue when reaching the demons had a bit more to them, as they are well drawn and seem very interesting. If there were some more paths and conversations instead of just two options to flesh out a bit more and expand on it, then that would be a very welcome improvement. That being said, this is a very fun and quick puzzle game that will take you no more than an hour and a half to complete, and I recommend giving it a go if not for the puzzles, then for the demon girls. Next we have One Dreamer's Prologue by Gareth Folks. A short preview of One Dreamer is coming out later this year and is a story about a struggling game dev in the industry. You play as Jumbo, an aspiring game dev who's working on a new VR game with your close friend Luna. Making a VR game has always been your childhood dream, so you quit your 3D modelling job and decide to pursue your passion with Luna who shares the same drive. However, it seems to me, you notice that being a game dev is tougher than you thought and you question whether you've become the type of game dev that you aspire to be or if you've lost your way. The whole game surrounds this story, but it brings the complexities of coding to the forefront. You had a chance to alter the files in the game and change them to how you want. You do this by directly opening the files and changing lines of code to what you desire. For example, setting the state variable of the door object to true instead of false in order to progress. You could also copy the value of variables from other files to ones you need in order to produce powerful results. This essentially helps you cheat through the game and turn everything into an advantage. I don't know what engine was used, but based on what I see in the files, it looks like it was made in Unity based on the coding styles and the classes used. This game really speaks to me on many levels because I understand how hard it is to be a software dev and to try and fulfill your dream and sometimes it's hard to try and maintain that drive. One Dream is encapsulates that feeling by going through the depth of emotions Jumbo is feeling and the use of voice actors for every character, including NPCs, really adds to that as you can really feel the weight of the words behind them. There are a lot of surreal moments that are very symbolic and you just have to take it in. However, the game also doesn't take itself too seriously as it is littered with memes and gaming culture, which is a welcome addition. The music is calming and fitting to the pace of the game, and I loved how the game shows test audio files which breaks the fourth wall and shows you really what it's like to develop software. It's got that watchdogs hacking feel to it, but done in a way that lets players who don't develop get a small glimpse into what coding is actually like and it's great to see. This is only the intro, but I have high hopes and high expectations for where this game is headed. If I was you, I'd go to Steam and I'd add it to your wishlist because the scope for this game is huge and I can tell it's going to be a massive success. And finally we have Steam Doll's Order of Chaos by Top Hat Games. A steampunk inspired metroidvania game about a vigilante behind a mask who decides to fix society with his own hands. Now I've seen this game pop up a lot on Twitter and this is only the demo version at the minute, but there is a Kickstarter for the game which I'll also leave in the description below. From what I can tell, society was born anew from something called the Great Collapse, and it caused society to cower in fear leaving people as mindless puppets. This gave way for people to take advantage of them for their own gain, and it's up to you and your own sense of justice to stop them from succeeding. The gameplay is simple, you can dash and jump from side to side and you can go up and down levels. To attack you have a variety of options, you can throw knives for distance attacks, 
melee for close range, or you could sneak up for a stealth attack, which results in this really cool animation if you're successful. These seem to be the only moves available at this point in the game, but I expect for them to expand further as the game progresses. All these moves take up your blue power gauge, especially the stealth attack, so you have to monitor this carefully as you navigate throughout the stage. You use these skills to take out machines and enemies and avoid as much damage as possible getting to your goal. The description on the Steam page describes this as a steampunk inspired metroidvania game and you can very much see that throughout, especially in the cutscenes. Everything looks so 19th century high tech sci-fi with the same mechanics you expect from your common metroidvania game. I'm also a big fan of the character design with the mask and the blades on each hand. It gives me sort of Deathstroke vibes from the DC universe. The controls are tight and work well with the controller that I used. My only issue is there are a couple bugs, such as being stuck in the save pool and unable to leave without inching further and further away. It makes it very frustrating and time consuming as I have no control over it whatsoever. Despite that, if you're craving a quality metroidvania experience playing as this badass anti-hero, then I highly recommend taking a look at Steam Doll's Order of Chaos. Well that's it from me, if you enjoyed leave a like, subscribe and make sure to leave a comment down below about what you guys thought about this month's indie games. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.